All right, let's look at the effects of caffeine. Well, I'm on the beach with Dr. Atkinson, and it looks like he's indulging in the mild stimulant that is caffeine from some coffee. Oh, oh, I spilt that, not to worry. He also has some tea containing caffeine, and next to that, some chocolate, which also has a little caffeine in it too. So let's see what the effects of this mild stimulant are. Well, it's a respiratory stimulant, which means it allows your cells to burn energy a little faster, enhance mental energy and alertness, but too much of it can cause anxiety or irritability. So that's what too much coffee can cause, a little problem there. Also, a lot of caffeine can cause headaches. Ooh, I think that's his brain, isn't it? And it's a mild diuretic, so if you drink a lot of coffee, you'll have to go to the toilet a little more than you expected. It can uh, make you more mentally alert, so a lot of people take caffeine when they're trying to study. But the problem is, is that if you drink too much of it, it can lead to insomnia. So these are the structures of caffeine and nicotine from the data booklet. I'm highlighting the tertiary amines that are present in both of those structures that's specifically mentioned in the syllabus. Now you could mention that there are alkenes, functional groups in both, I suppose that's okay, but methyl groups, no, no, they'll never accept that as the same functional groups present in both caffeine and nicotine.